Hello everybody, I'm Richard Oldner and welcome to the channel. Please, before we get going, make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, you know, do all that stuff so you get notified when I do all this testing. Today we're looking at my favorite subject, which is boost. We're gonna make big power from the Vortex. Check out the guns. Yeah, no, not so much. But we do have lots of power from a Vortex supercharger and we ran it on three different displacements, a 4.8, a 5.3, and a 6.0. Completely different combination, making completely different power levels. We'll show you how to make 700, 800, and 900 horsepower. Why is this guy still talking? Let's get to the dyno results. Okay, we're going to start off our little adventure on how easy it is to add power with a centrifugal supercharger, in this case a Vortec. And we're starting off with our first combination, which is a 5.3 liter. And this is when I did a, a test comparison of different camshafts, you know, blower cams. <laughs> So this was a 5.3 liter. Actually, this 5.3 liter, unlike a lot of them that come from the wrecking yard for my stuff, this one came from the guys at Strictly Performance. It was what they call a boost ready 5.3 liter. It had uh, Gen 4 rods. It had hard anodized pistons. It had a stock crank and a stock block, which was an LM7 block. It had their stage one uh, ported 706 heads from K-Tech, meaning it had stock uh, valve sizes and stuff. It wasn't like a full-on double throwdown deal. We had valve strings from Brian Tooley Racing. It started off with an LS9, a factory LS9 camshaft, a positive displacement camshaft. Yes, I know, not the ideal choice. Uh, the stock truck intake and throttle body, inch and seven-eighths headers with mufflers on it. We had 80-pound DECA injectors, and as always, the Holly HP management system. So we started off with our um, LS9 camshaft and our 5.3 liter produced the NA1, 428 horsepower and 400 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happened when we added our Vortex supercharger. This was still with the LS9 camshaft. Peak power jumped up uh, 666 horsepower and peak torque was 560, no, 574 foot-pounds of torque. And I'll go ahead and uh, we'll put the boost levels up here because uh, on these centrifugal blowers, the boost starts out much lower down at 3,000 or 3,500 RPM. And then the peak boost is up, as you see, up uh, past 6,000 RPM. So, but he, interestingly enough, what we did was this was, this is going to be our 700 horsepower combination. And we wanted to make 700 horsepower. And obviously we weren't quite there yet. We're getting close. But in order to do that without changing the pulley and the boost, which obviously is another fairly easy thing to do. In fact, this combination would eventually go up up and make uh, make near 900 horsepower when we were spinning the blower up and stuff. But here's what happened when we put a uh, Brian Tooley camshaft in here. So the camshaft that we installed from Brian Tooley Racing was a 613 596 lift split, a 227-244 degree duration split, and 115 degree lobe separation angle. And this cam was a good upgrade compared to the LS9 camshaft. You could see it basically improved power everywhere and also lowered the boost and again i'll go ahead and put the boost levels up here with the new brian tooley cam and you guys can kind of see what's going on here but the camshaft helped us exceed or, or yeah exceed 700 horsepower 715 horsepower peak torque was up to 603 foot pounds yeah 604 uh 605 yeah 607 foot pounds of torque it just kind of keeps rising there and so you can see 700 horsepower fairly easy with uh any kind of 5.3 you can do this with a junkyard 5.3 just as easily as the one that we use we've done this many times and then put a blower add boost we ran an intercooler on this an e85 and everything worked out fantastic so now that we've taken a look at our 700 horsepower let's jump up to 800 so stepping up to our 800 horsepower combination with the Vortec, we actually stepped down to a 4.8 liter. But as you can see, if you have an LS and it's a cammed LS, especially if you have decent heads and an intake manifold on it, and then you add boost from a decent centrifugal supercharger, pretty easy to make pretty big power numbers. So we'll take a look at our next combination. This was a 4.8 liter. This started out as an LR4, which long ago we had put a set of uh, forged pistons in it, stock rods, stock Gen 4 rods. It had JE small dome pistons in it. This one also had, at this test, although we had run stock heads many times, this one was equipped with TrickFlow 205 heads, very good head for that small bore motor. It had a uh, BTR uh, stage one blower cam on it, and that cam offered a 610-586 lift split 
a 223-238 degree duration split and a pretty wide 120 degree LSA. Again, not, not an ideal cam, but the one thing that it did do is want to make power fairly high in the RPM range. And the higher that we rev this with a centrifugal blower, the more the more blower speed we have and the more power that we have because we have more boost. The boost goes up with RPM. This thing was equipped with a Performer RPM intake and 750 carburetor, a set of inch and seven eighths long, inch and three quarter QTP long tube headers. And we had run a seven and a half an inch, seven and a half inch ATI damper on it. This thing was run carbureted with the MSD ignition controller and run best NA with 31 degrees of total timing. So run in this manner, our NA combination produced 440 horsepower peak torque checked in at 352 foot pounds. And here's what happened when we added the Vortec with the RPM air gap. We also ran it with a Victor Jr. And we made lots and lots of power. I'm gonna go ahead and swing myself up here so we can kind of see. Right, right at 800 horsepower, 799 horsepower, we'll call that. And I'll go ahead and put the boost curve up like we did with the other one. It's 500 and well, right at 600 foot pounds of torque there too at 6,800 RPM. You can see the, the increase, the gains offered by the centrifugal blower because we have a rising boost curve increased with engine speed. And basically this is why we had put that, that cam in it that allowed us to rev the motor because as we increase the engine speed, we increase the blower speed, we increase the boost and more boost, more power. Good things obviously happen here. So this was a good combination and this was actually unlike the previous one with the intercooler and the EFI, this one was run with a blow-through carburetor. And when we installed the blow-through application, we installed the Vortec on it. We also installed the CSU 850 dedicated blow-through carburetor that we tend to run on everything. And obviously, this worked out very well. I'll take a look and see what we did with our timing here. Dropped it down to 23 degrees. We did some jetting. And we also had an air to water intercooler on it and the Vortec was a TI trim. So plenty of power left. That, that thing could probably take us to a thousand horsepower if we got everything working right. So now let's take a look at, this was our 800 horsepower version. So now let's step up to 900. Well, it's certainly possible to make 900 horsepower with either a 4.8 or a 5.3. This particular one was a six liter. So let's take a look and see what we got going on for our test motor. On the 6 liter, it was a 6 liter LQ4, LQ9 block. It had a stock block and a stock crank. It had Carrillo and uh, CP bullet series rods and pistons in it. It had a Comp 469 cam in it, which was a 617, 624 lift split, a 231, 247 degree duration split, 113 degree lobe separation angle. See, we didn't use a blower cam in this, either a positive displacement or a centrifugal. It had uh, hardened push rods at 7.35s. It has had a TEA, a total engine airflow, ported 243 heads, some stage twos, 62 cc chambers, and they were full port. They float over 300 CFM, so they're good. Inch and seven eighths headers. We started off with a factory truck intake manifold. We tried a couple of others, which I'm going to show you. A to three pound Holly injectors, a Holly HP management system, 23 degrees. And we ran a Vortec TI supercharger, seven and a half inch crank pulley, 3.8 inch blower pulley, and an air to water intercooler. Run in this manner, our six liter, our supercharged six liter. And again, I'll go ahead and put the, the boost ranges on this because we ran this thing from near 3000 RPM up to 6500 RPM, where this thing made right at 900 horsepower. Eight, uh, eight, take that back, 897 or 8 horsepower peak torque was up at 725 foot-pounds of torque. The TI Supercharger had more if we wanted to spin it faster. We weren't spinning this thing for all it was worth. There was definitely power left. Uh, the TI Vortec would, could be a 1,000 horsepower supercharger if you you know spin everything right run E85 on it and all that. But this is where we ran this particular unit. And it worked out very well. One thing we noticed is obviously a lot more torque with a six liter compared to the 4.8 or 5.3. We only spun this one to 6,500 RPM. There was certainly more RPM. You could see the power was still climbing pretty rapidly, even with the truck intake. And unfortunately, I did not run this particular combination NA with this truck manifold. Uh, the closest approximation I have is this combination. 
with a Holly High Ram where it made around 500 and 28 29 horsepower so that gives us a rough idea the truck manifold would be up would be better down low and probably not make quite as much torque but it kind of gives you an idea there but more importantly and we'll get rid of that but let's take a look at a comparison test i did with the blower the truck manifold versus the factory ls1 intake manifold which as we all know or you guys should know from the uh, if you have not please take a look at the the LS Cathedral Port intake test that I ran, and we see the same kind of thing, NA, as we saw here, supercharged. The truck manifold is way better. The factory LS1 manifold was down to 860 horsepower, and peak torque was down to 697 foot-pounds. But basically, the factory LS1 manifold was down everywhere. So even under boost, <laughs> even while boost obviously helps the thing, the the intake manifold design is very important when you're looking at even supercharged or turbocharged combinations, which this test clearly shows. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what did we learn from this little adventure running the Vortex Supercharger on our 4853 and 60? We learned the normal thing that we see with boost all the time. Very, very easy when you add boost to make lots and lots of power. In fact, we made 700, 800, and 900 horsepower on our 4853 and 60 motors. And we've made less than that, obviously, 400, 500, 600 horsepower at lower boost levels and milder stock kind of combinations. The thing that I like best, and obviously the contrary to that is also true, you can make lots more power too if you have bigger blowers and spin them faster you can make well into four digit or double four digit power levels we've seen some some of these pro mod deals and stuff so it the amount of power that you can make is kind of crazy the thing that i really like about force induction stuff in general and the vortex stuff specifically is that when you want to add more power the only limit is going to be the supercharger itself. If you take a supercharger and install it on a stock 4.8 or a stock 5.3 or a stock 6.0, and then you want to upgrade that and make more power, when you make the naturally aspirated motor more powerful, you put a cam in it and springs, and as we saw, change the intake manifold if you put ported heads, all of those things that add power naturally aspirated not only add more power under boost, but then they lower the boost, which is kind of a double whammy. You can add intercoolers to them, you can add E85, and then the normal thing is you can just turn the boost up. You can turn the boost up up to the limit of whatever the flow rate of the supercharger is, and then obviously you could get a bigger supercharger. So I like that about Vortex superchargers in particular. If you spin them up and make more boost, you make more power. Also, when you run more RPM, they also make more power. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Do all that stuff so you get notified when I do all this testing. See you next time.